Hey guys, welcome back. It's your favorite Gimp with a Limp, and I am back here with Field Compa uh, Commander Napoleon. This is going to be part one of it. I don't know uh, how long I'm going to play through on this first uh, part. We'll see if it's the first turn, first battle, whatever it is. Just uh, depends on how long it's going to take. Before I get started, I do have a bit of good news uh, for myself. I'm actually expecting another baby. Found out the the wife's pregnant. We got to announce to the family over Christmas, so that was uh, exciting for everybody. I'm guessing it's going to be a boy. I might take a poll in the comments, uh, take guesses, and see what you guys think. This is going to be our third. It is going to cut down on my uh, varied game selection, I guess uh, I could put it. I won't be able to get uh, quite as many as I normally do, but I still have plenty you guys haven't seen. But I will be maintaining uh, Gimpy's Game Giveaway for you guys. So be on the lookout for that. Like I said, uh, around the beginning of January, I'll put up a video on what the next one's going to be. Guarantee you're going to like but let's take and get started here. If you don't know how I got to this point, uh, go ahead and watch the Field Commander uh, Napoleon setup. I go through the whole startup phase and how to set everything out and all that good stuff. So we're just going to go ahead and get cranking here on the actual game itself. Now, I've got all the forces. And for me, one of the little tips that I found that helps is for your enemy forces to go ahead and kind of divide them out as they're going to move before... You really get started because it'll save you a little bit of time. Now, for example, I've already got these done, and there's this little stack here of five. And if you look at the top, it'll tell you how to divide them up in groups. So for this one, enemy forces are going to be three forces in the same area, and that's going to be based on nationality. So if this group were in the same little area that's Genoa there, uh, they would be done separately from the guys in white instead. All right but they're here in Savona and since it's three you're gonna take three counters and roll for them during enemy movement so I like to just kind of separate them out and make sure you keep um, same named guys together for example I've got die chat die cat whatever his name is here so we'll take and put him together with someone else so I got a little stack there and a little stack here that way when I get into enemy movement I can just take and roll for this one, roll for this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, on down the line. Now I went ahead and got my forces divided out too for where I know I'm going to move because the objective for this one is to hold at least two objectives from the end of March. So we're in March now, okay, until the end of the game. So you start with one, Turin is right here next door to it, you can take this one very easily and all you have to do is not lose either one of these through the rest of the turns of the game to be fine so that's my goal I would like to get Milan as well and just hold these three and then just keep using the points that I get uh, to keep reinforcing uh, my guys because if I can take and get maybe pushed out to here maybe even into Milan and just kind of hold these areas uh, we'll see, but the big thing is the test games that I've played, these forces here, I haven't had them go anywhere except dead into uh, Nice, because that's the place where I tend to have the least amount of forces. So they'll always attack. So to win this game, you have to beat turn one. You have to have enough forces here to survive this stack of five coming in to attack you. I've gotten lucky in the other games that I've played that... Uh, these big stacks ended up getting randomized and they separated all out so I didn't have to take and fight a big chunk. If you get unlucky and the whole stack moves straight towards you and you end up having to fight them, that could go bad. And that's probably what's going to happen now that I've said something about it. But we look over here to our right on the sequence of play. The first thing that you're going to do is advance the turn counter. I've already done that. It's right here on March. All right. And now I'm going to do my moves. So it's moves resolve battle forced march and then resolve battles from that and then our resupply phase the first set of moves you can move adjacent anywhere you know with your forces one adjacent move except for garrisons and fortifications the ones that have the uh, uh, building symbol there along the bottom of them they can't move they're stuck where they're at and keep in mind if you have three times the forces that are in an area when you move into it you automatically win However, if I moved all my forces into here, I still wouldn't have three times the forces. 
if I did, I would probably do that just to wipe those guys out, but I would still have to move something here to go after those guys uh, to get it. But what I found works for me is I take and divide my forces roughly in half, and I send Napoleon north here into Turin, and I make sure to send enough to win this battle automatically. I have envelopment of three times the enemy forces. My, you will get a resupply phase before the enemy actually is going to do their movement. So I will be able to purchase more forces to bolster these guys before I've got the uh, first enemy attack coming in. And it helps just to, to be able to hold them off. So that's what I'm going to do. I've got, let's see, where are these guys' names? First up is Napoleon. I've got, uh, what's his name? If I can get the counter turned the right way here. Uh, a guru <laughs> I'm hoping that's right my French is horrible my rednecks a lot better uh, McCard and I'll put these up in the corner for you guys La Harp and Stingle Stingle I know someone's gonna comment about my atrocious uh, pronunciations but it is what it is so We'll take and move those guys there. And since I am moving with a force, I do believe this is 30, uh, not counting Napoleon. Uh, strength, which is the number there in the bottom right, not counting the superscript like you have on uh, Stingle. His is 8-4, you just go with the 8. So I'm moving with a force of 30 against a force of 9. All right, so I've got more than three times, which means they're going to lose automatically. I'm not even gonna go to the battle board. And my guys will go right here. So that's all the movement. I've got to hold at least these two areas. I've got control of both cities. I'm good at this point. Uh, we would resolve battles, which is what I just did with pulling the envelopment off. Uh, force march, this is where you can pay one supply point per thing that you move to uh, move to a different area. I don't force march too often because I'm always holding on to all my supply points to purchase new units. So, eh, I mean, if it works for you, it works for you, but for me, I don't do it. You would also resolve any battles that would arise from that. Like if I spent my three points to move three guys in there, you know, have a battle, but that wouldn't do me any good. And now we're at the French resupply. I'm going to get three base supply and then three per city I control, which is why it's a good one. A good strategy especially to go after this because you're getting three more points so I'm getting nine points on top of the three I already have so let me grab my uh, counters here Let's see there's one two and three so I've got 12 points worth and I can spend those at this point to purchase new units I'm definitely going to do that and I'd already picked out the ones I wanted earlier I'm going to take and get myself three recruits, all right? Two cannons and the level one recruit. And I get him just because he's a bullet sponge. He's the lowest skill level and he'll die before the others will. And there's still a chance he could possibly do something, but at least he'll take uh, enemy shot, you know, before some of my more valuable units. So I'm going to take this very nice cannon and put that with Napoleon. I'm going to take this strength five cannon and the one and put down here. And this makes it to where I've got 36 points in each stack, as long as I did my math right on that. Now they, when they advance towards me, they're going to take and go towards the one with the least amount of uh, battle power, firepower. Since they're both the same, I'm just going to make the judgment call and have them go towards Nice, which is where they always go in my games anyway now we start the enemy phase and it's going to be the enemy orders and that's going to be right here along the top and you're going to roll off on your d10 oh let me pull my supplies off before i forget because i spent my 12 points so i'm left with jack and squat put that right there and they have eight supply which is going to come into play when you're rolling for them that's why especially these first guys more often than not always come shooting right over because you're not going to get a low roll because they're burning their supply to take and come in honestly i'd rather them burn supply rather than use it during the uh, the combat phase to increase their roll there and much rather them do it during the movement so 
Their first roll is going to be for these little two guys here. I'll do that for them first. And they're going to take, if they are six supply points or higher, they're going to add plus three on the roll and spend three supply points. So let's take and spend three. That leaves them with five. Put that right there. And we'll do our first roll of the game. Plus three modifier for these guys. And shit, I dropped the damn dice. Hold on. Yeah, so I went to drop the uh, the dice into the tower and it dinged off the edge of the tower and it rolled under the couch that I have in this room all the way to the back of it. So we got it now. Plus three coming up. Eight, of course. So eight plus three is 11. They're going to advance. So they're just going to advance right into here. We already know there's going to be a battle there. Next is going to be this group. They have four to five supply points, so they're going to spend two to take and add a plus two. So we'll flip this over to a three, pull this one off, and see what they've got here. Two plus two is four. Is hold. I'll be damned. That's the first time I've ever seen that happen. That's actually not too good because that means I could end up having these guys reinforce some from these groups and I could get hit with a bigger wave on a following turn but at least I don't have to worry about um, these because I've got more than three times that so they're gonna get enveloped and crushed right off the bat okay I don't get to show you a battle as quickly as I anticipated all right so that's them done let me take and turn them vertical here so I remember and we just have this 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 now remember when you're doing these moves that if they take and uh, have recruits there, they're considered their own nationality. So you have <clears throat> different na uh, nations, you can tell by the different flags here on the left, they will all be grouped up together, but then if you have just their base recruits, which are just the ones that look similar to the fortifications, but you know not fortifications, they're gonna take and move separately from these stacks. All right, so our first guy here, he they have three supply points left. They're going to take and spend one of them to add a one. So let's see where he's going to go. They got a five. That's going to be a six, which means random. Now, the way you do this, as you can see, it's got one, two, three, four spaces there around them. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight. If you get a nine, ten, it's just uh, re-roll. So see where he's gonna go. He's gonna go one, two. That's unfortunate. I did see this is what I mean. Now there's a big stack and I could get it, uh, end up getting hit harder, but I will have another turn to reinforce these groups. So that might work out in my benefit too. All right, next group here is gonna go. They still got supply points left. They're gonna get another plus one. And that's five again, random. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. See where these guys are gonna go. And they're gonna go right here. I might be able to take this group out. I should have more than three times. And I could take and move Napoleon over. And then maybe, no, because I'd have to force march the rest of them down. I don't wanna have to do that. Oh, I have to think about that one. Okay, and last supply point spent to take and assist with this group's movement. Again with a plus one. Four comes up to a five. You know, honestly, that's helping me because that's making them random. So again, all the way around. I wonder if I'll luck out and get these low rolls when I'm rolling for my cannons later. Nine, that goes to 10, so it's gonna be a re-roll again. Seven, that goes to eight. French held objective, so he's gonna, ooh. That's just a big butt load of hurt coming my direction right there. And the last group, I gotta hope this set of cavalry goes over here somewhere, because this is what I'm talking about. I've got all these forces pinched in on me. I wanted to have a battle with these guys and take them out instead of having to potentially fight all of them. Oh, this could be bad for me. All right, last guy, he got a 10 on his own. He's going to advance. Well, let's see, one, two, one, two. Both of them are advanced, so I'm just going to take and send this guy here so I don't get swamped because they're both equal. Well, I'll tell you what, let's roll off on it. Uh, we'll do one to five, six to ten, and see where he goes. Nine. So he went there anyway. 
Okay, so now we're going to take and resolve any battles. There would be a battle here, with the exception of the fact that I do have uh, more than three times. I'm not going to bother to take and pull them down and then check for envelopment. Uh, that's one of your pre-battle steps when you do all the stuff. Um, you'll take and uh, roll for your fog of war. Honestly, I should. If you're playing the game absolutely seriously, take and pull them down to the thing and then roll for your uh, fog of war. It could potentially change it. There could be other uh, enemy reinforcements added to the battle. Purely for the sake of not having to move my camera around, I'm just going to go ahead and go with the envelopment because more than likely that wouldn't happen, but there is a chance that they could gain enough points to not have to fall under the envelopment, but it's not very likely to happen because I still think I've got more points than they could possibly gain because, let's see, I got 36 to their 8. Yeah, they'd have to gain something like 7 or 8 points to not have to do that, so I'm not going to bother to... Uh, see if they get that so we'll pull these guys off they got uh, removed they will go into the um, uh, recruit bucket just in case let's see that was Povera Provera and Brunt. I think I said those right we'll toss them in our little recruit bucket here so they could potentially come out during the uh, enemy resupply phase which we're getting ready to do now so that was our Resolve battle step. And, yep, nothing else to worry about there. Now we're going to take and do our enemy resupply. And for that, I always forget where the hell it is on the board. Okay, here it is. Uh, roll for each enemy held city. So this isn't going to be places just with their troops. This is going to be places like this that just have a fortification and garrison in it as well. So we're going to roll for here, here here and here I'm not going to try to say the names well Milan I know what's here Mantua Genoa no that one what's this one nope <laughs> Clackenfurt Clagenfurt nope okay we're going to roll for Milan first uh, and they have the possibility to gain a fortification a garrison a reinforcement or three supply points so honestly I'd rather them just get the supply points all right one is a fortification. Lovely. So he got that. We will go down here to Genoa and see what they get. They get a three. A three is one reinforcement. When they get a reinforcement, it comes from the cup or the bowl. A little shitty classic bowl here. We'll just grab them out of that random. See what we got. Oh wow, they got the crappiest recruit they could possibly get. The the level one recruit. Woo, yay. Uh, we'll go here to them. Why do I have that? Oh, these guys go here. I was like, why are they have six of them? Okay, so those forces there. Now we'll roll for Mantua. See what they get. They got a one. Fortification, which is way over here across the board. Good guy. See, I don't even think I would want to fight these guys because they have three fortifications and two garrisons. So they would have three cannons firing at me. And cannons do work in this game. I mean, they do work. So, yeah, I'm not going to even go near Mantua. I'm just going to let them keep building up and sending forces out. Because as long as I don't go in there, I don't have to worry about all those extra forces. And last is Klagenfurt up here. Let's roll for them. And see. Okay, I just want to make sure the special rule didn't affect anything with that. And see if they got. they got a seven. Seven is three supply points. All right, I can deal with that. Okay, now we are at the start of May. I am still good on the defeat condition because I still hold uh, two objectives, and it's you know past March. So, and I still have Napoleon if he dies or. I do anything stupid with him that could end my game real quick where the hell am I gonna go see here's what I'm thinking how many points are here no cuz I I don't think I've got enough to envelop let's see that's 13 18 20 really they got 20 points there oh damn my shitty math yeah they do damn that is unfortunate 
yeah, I'd have to have 60 points to envelop them, and I don't think that's going to happen. If I could move both of my guys over into that, I'd think about it, but they wouldn't come after me. They would go after my objectives. I have to hold the objectives. What I'm really afraid of is getting this entire group here hitting this bunch, and that's what's probably going to happen. Ugh. Okay, these guys are pretty well reinforced. I'm not going to move. I'm going to leave them as they are. I'm going to take and just gain my points, which is nine. Okay, I'm going to pause the video real quick, look through what my options are to purchase, and that way you guys aren't just sitting here listening to me ramble, and then I'll throw them on the board. Okay, here's what I decided to do. Because they're both possibly going to get attacked more well they're both going to get attacked definitely and cannons they do so much work for me because they just sit in the back and they just blast away so i'm definitely going with cannons so i bought a recruit cannon for each uh side one for uh, each place rather that leaves me actually with one supply point and i'm hoping that some of these guys get friggin hold orders because if they don't i am sol yeah, I'm going to be SOL, especially if these groups move in. It would be great if they just kind of split up and one group attacked one side and one group attacked the other, rather than doing the, oh, I don't know, this could be bad. It worked out very good in the games that I played off camera where I got all these guys down and then I was able to pick off these groups individually by moving in on my forces and pinching down. But if they wipe out one of my sides, I'm done. All right, but I'm hoping my cannons will hold me tight because I've got three cannons here, two cannons here, the best cannon up here. And you'll notice that I'm buying the recruit cannons instead of the uh, garrison, the fortification cannons. And the reason I'm doing that is simply because these are mobile. I can take them with me if I want to rather than the fortifications that are stuck. So that's the end of my turn. I'm going to take and roll off for enemy orders. They've got three uh, supply points. We're going to see what happens with them. Let's just start up here at the top and work our way down. Uh, we'll have this one recruit here to worry about as well. So we've got this group. They have three, so they'll take and spend one. I can grab myself a two here. Set it right there for a plus one. Ten. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. Advance. So uh, He's going to take and advance right up here into Napoleon. We will be having a battle there. See what happens with this guy. He's going to spend one. Plus one is eight. I keep going up here to my battle sheet instead of here. Eight French held objectives, so he's going here as well. Now these guys have the option to go after either, and I still have them both at the same amount. So I might divide them up to make it a more even fight than that, like have one more group go up here and then have two groups go down here. So I'd have two relatively even big fights. All right, uh, this group, last supply point, plus one. It'd be great if one of these guys got a hold. Eight, that's not a hold, that's an advance. So, well, it's technically nine with French held objectives, so he's gonna move in as well all right now let's see what do we have here that's a four three and three and a five three and three that's all infantry cannon or uh, cavalry let's see well there's no cavalry down here so we'll have them go there one that's good what's one do two under enemy held objective <laughs> nice that's going to be, let's see, the closest enemy held objective is this way, actually. Because one, two, one, two, three. He's actually going to go there. Nice. Very nice. That makes it to where I still stand a chance. And five. Five is random. I don't know why the hell I keep knocking this thing all around. Maybe I'm just excited about the upcoming baby. Or at least I'm saying I'm excited. She, uh, she's thrilled. 
me, all I see is 18 years of payments. <laughs> see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, again, as we're going around. Come on, high number, go away. Let me take out these smaller groups of forces and see what happens. Nine. Yes. No, that's a reroll. Wait, is that a nine or six? That's a six. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. So he goes up. Oh, I was so excited there for a second. Then I was like, no, wait, I'm going to have to reroll. And was, oh, wait, no, it's a six. All right. This actually works out perfectly. A good chunk of their forces went here. I can take care of them later. So now I've just got two rather smaller battles. I definitely outnumber them big time in both areas. I don't think I have enough for envelopment, but we'll take and bring it down to the table anyway for both, uh, just in case. And we're gonna see what happens. Y'all give me a sec, we're gonna switch it over here to the battle board. All right, guys, welcome to the battle board. I'm sorry that it's a little spaced out, you know, away from you guys. Just the way the battle board's shaped where it's elongated like this makes it to where I have to back the camera up a little bit to be able to get the whole thing in frame. But we're good to go because I will put the uh, counters up here in the top left there for you so you guys will be able to see it easily. Again, just like everything with DVG, nice and simple. You're going to start top, work your way down. Now, our pre-battle is going to be our roll for Fog of War, which is this little chart here. Envelopment check, determine the battle plan quantities, which I've already got down here. Uh, buy additional French battle plans, which you can do with supply points if you want. We're not going to. Uh, select insight counters, place French forces. I've already got that done just to save time. Place enemy forces. Again, that's done to save time. And I'll tell you guys why they're so far in the back. It's a nice little tactic I like to do. And then once we're done with that, we get into our actual battle turns. Now, this fog of war determines how many uh, turns the battle is going to last. It's not like some of the other DVG games like uh, Sherman Leader that it's a set five turns depending on events. This, it can be anywhere from two turns to five turns and then you know, changes around depending on what happens on this thing. And this is affected by the supply points the enemy has. It's good for us that the enemy has none right now because they don't get any bonuses on this roll. This can really help us out, especially if we roll low. Uh, some of these games actually, or some of these items actually give us um, uh, troops. There's one here. Which one is this? You may move one mobile French force to this battle. Where is the one I really like though? Um, ah. Pay two supply points to add any one French recruit to one French occupied area. I love that one because you can spend two supply points to get a very nice recruit if you hadn't done it. For example, this recruit cannon is normally six points for its cost, but you could get it for two if you had that happen. Anyway, let's take and roll off on our fog of war and see what we have happen here. How many turns we're going to have? Again, no modifier because they have uh, no supply points. Low number six. That's not a low number. You may move one mobile French force to this battle. <sighs> Do I want to move a mobile French force to this battle? I've really. Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of tempted to move one, but I don't know. I've got such good forces here that I probably don't want to risk it. Um, you know what? Yeah, I am going to take and do that for now because it's already determined. I'm going to take and move this level one recruit and move him here and we'll switch some forces around. And the reason I'm doing that is because he um, can absorb fire. He'll get hit before my other much better quality troops will get hit and I don't care about losing a level one recruit that I can buy back for one supply point versus losing you know my best veteran troops that cost me nine supply points to get back huge difference okay so we're good there we've done our roll for um, uh, fog here and now we do our development check and this is what I was talking about earlier where the condition can change because the enemy can get more troops, you can get more troops, and depending on what happens, 
the numbers might change so that's why it's not done there on the board again i did that simply to save time while filming let's see here they have 5 11 13 20. they really got 20. Ah, damn yeah i definitely don't have uh 60 points worth uh not doing too bad let's see it's 10 18 23 uh 29 what is that uh 37 nice big advantage I'm uh, two to one over them but I'm not three to one so no envelopment determine battle plan <clears throat> quantities I've already done that here they automatically get two that's listed down on the board there and your setup on how many battle plans they're gonna get and for the French it's gonna depend if you have Napoleon you get two if you don't you get one in the scenario but uh, you can uh, pay for more if you want them and Napoleon also has the ability to get insights all right, so we're not buying more battle plans, but we can select insight counters. And insights are like this one that I selected called terrain. All right, I'll put that up on the board for you guys. So the two that I selected were grape shot and terrain. And if you select an insight, because I've got Napoleon and I can select one of the insights, it replaces one of my battle plans. But terrain makes it to where place all enemy forces in reserve or approach by placing all their forces in the reserve that makes it to where they have to cross this whole battlefield they don't have cannons i have two cannons and i'm going to be blasting the living hell out of them as they're walking across this field they have to make it one two three spaces and whatever's left of their troops by the time they get here i'll get to fire into them and tear them up there's a good chance i can cause them to rout uh before uh by the time they get here oh speaking of which when i rolled a six i needed to put the battle turn marker here at four for four battle turns i forgot to mention that when we were doing that thing so this would be four turns and then i want to have them taken out before we get to withdrawal because that can end up just by a roll of a die killing all my guys if I haven't messed them up. I would really hate to have that happen and I would probably go cry. So I'm gonna take this grape shot and I'm gonna attach it to my weaker cannon. I thought about putting it on my stronger cannon but I would rather have two decent cannons than one really good and one poor cannon. This way I have two that I can take and roll a six or under to take and bust them up and I'll just set that terrain inside there because that cost me unfortunately i could have another battle plan again to use with my troops but having them back there and having those extra rounds to shoot into them is so much more advantageous than taking and uh, having an extra battle plan in my opinion but grape shot adds plus two plus one so effectively my recruit cannon is six one with a little one superscript so if it rolls a one when it attacks it does double damage so two hits and it can hit multiple enemies if it wipes out one enemy it can go after others let me take and organize these guys by there we go so he's going to get hit first since he's conscript and the rest are aligned now i have to draw the enemy battle plan so i'll go ahead and uh, draw those now where are we at battle turns inside activation select that draw on the sign yeah i've already selected my battle plans we'll select theirs we got my little cup of enemy battle plans i'm hoping we get some decent ones Let's see what they get of course they got one of these i hate the horizontal ones all encounters get plus three on activation rolls uh, that's actually not bad that's not going to matter for them on this turn we'll set that there out of the way and this one armed aimed if line no roll they aren't so they're going to have to roll Ooh, that makes them infantry attack is plus four cavalry attack is plus two two gives them a superscript again this isn't going to help them on this first turn not when they're so far back this is going to be on one of their guys it's really not going to matter because this doesn't have any advance this is purely um attack so hell it doesn't really matter who i put it on they're not going to be moving uh we'll just throw it on their leftmost guy here because you're going to take and put it onto their highest level guy and that's 
based on whether they're conscript, poor, line, uh, veteran, and I think it's elite, uh, something like that. The little letter that's on the left side of the counter. So they've got their battle plans and the rest of them will do the generic battle plans that are here on the side. After we have drawn and assigned them, we're going to resolve the enemy battle plan. So let's take and do that one. Again, he's column, so he would have to roll, but this means he's not going to move or do anything. He can't attack, so we'll set that to the side. Uh, next guy here, he is going to advance because he is more than two away. He's in column, so he's not going to have to roll. Bam. And the rest of them will be doing the same thing. So they've all just done the basic advance um, activation battle order here over on the side because, again, they don't have uh, the ability to do anything else. That's why I love starting them way in the back so they have to cross open field and my cannon fire. My guys I put into line so they could take an open fire when the enemy reaches here. The potential bad thing of that is if the enemy comes into my square, if they're able to hit my lines, then they do, what is that thing called? It's the, um, shit, I can't remember the name of it. The thing where they, uh, I forget the name, I have to look it up in the rule book. Uh, when they move into your uh, area, then you have to take a uh, check. If you fail it, then you take a damage and you have to retreat a hex, or not a hex, a line. So that can end up hurting you real bad. I'll look that up here in a sec. Anyway, the only thing I can do this turn is fire with my two cannons. I'll fire with my little recruit cannon here first, just a six or under, and it's going to be on one of these guys here in the front, and it'll definitely hit this conscript first because I have to take out their lesser guys first. Let's see what we get here. Three. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Bam. Flick him over. Next one. Again, six or under, but this one has a superscript, so if I ended up rolling a one, it would kill him and damage one of the others. Six, all right, so that's another hit. Bam, first guy gone, and there we go. That leaves him with 18 points on the board. We'll move this down. Next turn, we'll take and throw these back in. And again, you can see you're just gonna take and keep rolling down the line there. Let's take here and knock some stuff over. Draw them a couple more battle plans. Uh, don't have any insight to activate. Oh, my battle plans aren't isn't going to change. I'm sticking with Grape Shot pretty much the whole uh, time. I do have others I can choose, but I love Grape Shot. It's so freaking good. All right, let's draw a couple battle plans for them. Come on, no whammy, no whammy. Okay, a couple of vertical ones. I can take that. Wedge and melee. Let's see, so advance attack one. We'll just take and throw that there and throw that there. So one for each one of their guys and then the one in the back. This guy's gonna go ahead and advance, I know. And there's a column advance attack. And uh, let's see, what does he do here? He's going to take an advance attack. He can attack because he's out of range. At a plus two, plus two. If he's at zero to one range, he'll go to line. The zero range is here, one is here, so he's not there yet. So his activation is done. He just advanced. This guy, melee, if line, no roll. Advance, infantry, attack, line. Okay, so he's got to roll to activate. He needs a seven or under for his little leadership number there, command number. Let's see, this is, what's his name, Salish. Oh yeah, this is one that has two counters, actually. Salish has his cavalry here and then the infantry here. All right, so let's see if he's going to activate. An eight, nine, or 10 would mean that he wouldn't. Five, so he's gonna activate, so he'll advance. No attack to be made, and then he's going to go line. We'll flick him around this way. So that takes care of their battle plans. Now my battle plans, and my battle plan is to shoot them. Again, cal uh, cannons, and you can see on the next turn, they're gonna advance. And then after I fire again with my cannons, you know, on the following turn, 
I'll be able to fire with all my frontline guys into them so you can see how the strategy just crushes them. This strategy will fall apart if they've got their own cannons chewing up your front lines though. At that point, you probably need to push. All right, so first cannon, this one does not have the superscript. Come on, whammy, 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 whammy. 10, <laughs> no whammy. All right, so second cannon. Come on, I need hits here. I need hits. Eight, no, oh, bad whammy. Okay, uh, yep, we're gonna go on to our next turn. See, this is where it's falling down for me because I have to get these guys uh, lit up. If I had done that, I think taking out this cavalry gets them down to where I've got three times. Yeah, I would be more than three times if I can take out this cavalry. So let's take and go on to the next turn and see what happens. All right, so we're gonna take and draw for them. Again, I'm leaving my um, battle plans the same. I'm not gonna change it. Grape shot works great for me until it doesn't. All right, first one, second one. Don't tell me this is the one. Ooh, okay. This, they get uh, a plus three when attacking. That could do me a lot of harm. Now see, this is melee again, and I'll tell you what, we'll put it, the best thing for them would be on this infantry that they already have, because if line, no roll, so we'll put it right there. This guy is going to advance, this guy is going to advance, now they're at one. He's in line, so no roll, he's going to advance, and infantry attack, line, okay, so now he's going to attack, this is bad. But this is why I've got my little bullet sponge recruit here. He needs to roll a five or under, so we need six or better here to take no whammy. No! Oh, my poor little recruit. Bam. So, that was my one free hit. Gone. Okay, so that takes care of them. Now we're on to my phase. Cannons are going to be firing. First one, I need a six or under. Come on. Come on, take this out. Yes, sir, that's what I'm talking about. And since these guys are both line, I'm gonna choose to take and hit the cavalry because the cavalry can only take one hit. They're gone. That means they're gonna have to route check and they will start routing at the end of this turn because I do have more than three times what they have on the board. So I, effectively, I just won. And once you hit the route phase of the game, they're just gonna continually try to back away from uh, my troops each turn, and I can just keep firing at them. But you don't count turns anymore once you hit uh, the route phase. Anyway, let me fire with my other cannon here. See what happens with it. All right, four, he got a hit, so that'll flip him. He's got one hit remaining and we'll fire with my infantry here since they're all right here at the front and like should I move my cavalry up yeah I'll give my cavalry a uh, see the march if column no roll cavalry advance advance or retreat so I think cavalry can advance twice let me take and look up that thing here real quick I want to look up uh, what it's called when you take and move into someone else's uh, line because I think I can take and move up and make him do that check. So let me look that thing up here real quick. Okay, so that thing's called a shock check. I don't know why I couldn't remember it uh, to save my butt. Anyway, I'm going to take and do the march order first with my cavalry here because the way I understand this is basically the cavalry get to advance twice. Uh, infantry would just advance but since cavalry cavalry it says here you know at the top of column no roll but then cavalry advance and then you follow the rest of the orders down so they'll advance and then they'll advance again and by advancing again they make this enemy perform a shock check when your forces enter or the enemy forces enter a region that your forces are in eat the defending side has to perform a shock check which is where they have to roll equal to or under their uh, combat value 
or they have to take a hit and retreat. So unless he rolls a three or under, he's destroyed. At which point, bam, I can just continue firing on to these guys. So let's see if I get him taken out here. Two, so he got it. Uh, that is unfortunate. All right, uh, we will take and fire with my guys here. Since they're in line, I don't have to worry about activating them. Eight or under, he got a hit, so bam, last he's destroyed, don't have to worry about that. Now this guy is absolutely routed because he has less, uh, I've got more than three times what they have, so bam, uh, they're going into the route check. Like I said, you don't have to take and worry about turns anymore, it's just going to go back and forth where they're re uh, retreating each turn and you can attempt to take them out. If they make it off the back of the board, they get returned to an adjacent area that is either enemy controlled or neutral from where the battlefield was. So enemy turn, he's going to retreat. I'm just going to see if I can take him out with cannons. I'm not going to worry about uh, chasing him down with cavalry. Well, I don't know. Maybe I should chase him down with cavalry. All right. Well, first cannon here will fire six or under. If I hit him with a six or under, he's dead because he's cavalry. Two, bam. He is down. Which one was this? Schubert's, Scubert's, whatever he is. He is down. So our first battle was a success, and the only thing it cost us was one little one firepower uh, recruit. So that is not a bad loss there. I will trade that any day. But you guys can definitely see here how my little strategy of hanging back and blasting away with cannons while forcing them in the back with that terrain in sight uh, works wonders. But do keep in mind, if the enemy has cannons, if you're attacking somewhere that has fortifications, then you're in a world of trouble because they're going to take and fire back at you. And they'll be tearing your infantry up just like you're tearing theirs up. Anyway, let me take and reorganize this back and we'll get back down to the map. All right, we're back down here to the battle map. And you can see I took and marked turn with our little uh, battle marker there just to remember where it was. I went ahead and transferred Napoleon back with his victorious forces back to the area we control since we were able to smash them. Our next step is going to be to resolve this battle. I'm going to wait and do that in the following video just because I think I'm roughly around an hour already on this point. So we'll take care of it at that point. But I did realize that I forgot to move this recruit here because he's still in the same spot. And I'm thinking I forgot him. I don't think he got a hold order because I don't remember doing anything with him. And it's just a one. So we're going to go ahead and roll off for him real quick. See where he's going to go. That is a nine. Nine French held objectives. So he'll go right there. And we might end up having to deal with him. Maybe I'll just send a level three force there and crush him. Um, we'll pick up part two with uh, this battle. At which point we'll be taking and getting into... Uh, the following turn into July and you can see I don't have to make it too much farther I've already been able to wipe out a good chunk of their forces so they've got just one major army left and if I can take that out I can easily take out Milan and then just maybe put a holding pattern of troops along these lines so any reinforcements they send uh, this direction I could just crush and not have to worry about, I mean, I'm still pretty sure I could just take and win by uh, buying up as many reinforcements as I could and just holding these areas, these two areas here just for the remainder of the turns. But this first battle, this 19, or 17, I keep calling it 1996, 1796, you really don't have access to many troops. You just have the small handful you start with and the recruits. So you have to make what little you have work, which is why I just... If someone knows, someone has an idea why you would push here other than trying to take more objectives, let me know because I think you can still buy plenty of what you need with just two or three cities for the supply points you get without having to worry about these and the amount of forces it adds to the game against you if you go after either one of these uh, two areas is just massive. I mean, it's... I think it's something like eight counters it adds to the board in the uh, the late arriving forces and it's a place when french forces enter these areas 
I don't see a reason to enter those areas then just hold it out you know as long as you can you guys let me know down in the comments what you think about that one see if there's a some type of strategy or an objective that I'm missing that would make me want to go after this area that has a massive amount of fortifications in it to be blasting my guys all to hell anyway we'll pick that video up here in the next few days you guys take care i'll see you in the next one